What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Boiler for Rayfield Davis podcast, brought to you by the Field of 68 Podcast Network. Make sure you check out our website, RayfieldDavisBasketball.com. We've got a couple of spring break, co- spring break camps coming up. But make sure you like, subscribe, comment on the podcast, let us know how we're doing. Um, today, we got a real special guest, another one of those really, 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 really important people to turn in Purdue around, <laughs> um, a catalyst for change, one of the people that was pulled the leadership out of me when I didn't want it to come out of me. <laughs> that sound crazy when you said that, but, um, <laughs> but no, um, nonetheless, I want to show my appreciation to Josh Bonatal, someone that really, really locked into Purdue and really put a lot into Purdue, especially when we were in dark times. I mean, this dude would be in the weight room at five in the morning. We haven't won a game in two months. Yeah, this dude is asking you to lift early. We still gonna lose. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, no, nah, no further ado. Josh Bonatal, what's up, Josh? How you doing? What's up, man? I'm good, man. I'm I'm excited. This is awesome. Like it's one of my favorite things. Like you and I were 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 catching up a little bit on this, but man, like one of my favorite things is just seeing it all come full circle. So just like seeing everything, not only everything that you did during your time at, at Purdue and, and, and the impact that you left on, on that program and all the people. And man, and I've told you myself included, man, like you made me, you made me a better coach and just seeing, you know, even from that, how you're taking it to the next level with, you know, all your work in the community and with the kids and, you know, to, to now what you're doing here, man, this is, this is special. So for me, man, it. I'm 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 something. honored to you know uh, be a part of you. it. So uh, no, I appreciate it. And I mean, when I very first started this podcast, I like I said, I wanted to do a podcast that showed kind of one a lot of love to people that really impact Purdue, but only my and also myself, but also the people that really were catalysts for change. I mean, because you yeah. lose at home in the CBI, you come in <laughs> last place in the Big Ten. <laughs> And then, you know, yeah. we turn it around and kind of off to yep. the races. But I know for that time, and I guess I was the oldest around, I got a lot of credit. Mm-hmm. But before that year, I didn't talk much. And you kind of mm-hmm. really pulled that out of me when a freshman came. But I do want to spend a lot of time talking about you and yourself and kind of your path. Because when sure. I ran into you, yep. I was in high school. Yep. And I was on a visit. <clears> and Paint had um, Paint said, yo, Ray, got a new strength coach from Chicago Bulls. And I was like, Chicago Bulls. All right, that's lit. <laughs> so kind of talk yeah, about yeah, um, yeah. what got you, I mean, what led you to Chicago Bulls? What led you to, um, yeah. to Purdue? Because one thing I'm real big on is, um, because you obviously, because I worked out with you my very first day on campus. I don't know right. if you remember. You put me through the oh, basketball yeah. workout. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So oh, you yeah. clearly love basketball. So one thing I'm yeah. big on is how people can stay a part of the game without actually being a player. So how, what yeah. kind of, yeah. what, tell yeah. me about your path. Yeah, I mean, so so basically my path, and this is the only time you're going to hear me say this, but, but you know, my path is just I wasn't as good of a basketball player as you were. So it, <laughs> that's, that's the one and only time I'm going to say that, though, for the podcast. You know? Straight up. Um, but uh, no, I wasn't, I wasn't very good. I thought, you know, in my head, I, I always thought I was a lot better than, than I actually was. But, you know, I, I grew up a uh, small town in Wisconsin called Lake Geneva. It's about an hour and a half north of Chicago, I grew up right in the heart of the Jordan years. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you know, diehard Bulls fan, Jordan fan, like everything, you know. Um, And uh, so my whole life from as, as, you know, as far back as I can remember, it was like, man, one day I'm going to play for the Bulls. Like that was, that was my mission. And I think you know this about me too. I'm, I'm stubborn. So I was that kid, (laughs) man, like, like I was, I was in like, I was in like high school, like college intramural still thinking, man, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep working. I'm gonna walk on at Wisconsin and like, I'm gonna get my <laughs> shot, you suck. know, like, um, so I just, you know, all my friends obviously are clowning on me from that, like, <laughs> like, man, you know, um, but you know, I think fortunately for me, I was at least like, you know, I had a, at least enough wisdom about me um, to be like, well, you know, like on, on the off chance, like I, I don't play for the Bulls. Um, what's another way in? And I think, you know, through even when I was in like grade school, and middle school, like I just started going to the, to the YMCA in my hometown, like literally every single day. Like I, like I lived there. School ended. I was at the Y and um, 
I was like sneaking to the weight, like you weren't supposed to be in the weight room unless you were in high school. I was just sneaking in because I was like, oh, I got to get stronger for basketball. I didn't know, you know, what I was doing. And, you know, it's these old like Nautilus machines and, you know, stuff like that. So just like, I mean, I'm just like, and trying to be a hero, you know, like way too much weight. Um, but like doing that, running and stuff like that. Um, and just kind of fell in love with the process of, you know, I think, I think for me, um, you know, I was, I was probably never really the most talented, but it was like, I, I was going to put the most work in, you know? And, and so I think I, I fell in love with that process of how do you make yourself better as a player? And as part of that, um, kind of the development aspect of, of becoming a better athlete, becoming stronger, becoming faster. Um, I look back now and I'm like, man, I spent so many hours and I was doing the dumbest stuff. I was like, I had no idea. You know what I mean? Um, and, uh, and so, you know, I think it was probably like around my junior year of high school where I, I like, connected the dots that this was a real job to like be a, a sports performance coach, strength and conditioning yeah. coach that like, you know, that was a way that I could, you know, make it to not only the NBA, but the Bulls one day. Um, right. and, uh, and, and so, <clears throat> you know, from there, I really just started studying like who are people in positions that I would hope to one day get to mm -hmm. and what has been their path because, you know, success leaves clues, you know, it's just like, yes, as a player, you're going to look at, you know, like, who are, it's not only like, who are the players you look up to, but it's also like, who are the players that maybe like their skill set might, you right. know, fit exactly. the things that like, you don't, maybe you don't do it yet, but like, right. you can learn from them. And they've had success doing it at a very high level. So, mm -hmm. you know, success leaves clues, study that, learn it, follow that path. Exactly. Um, so I kind of did the same thing on the, on the sports performance path. Um, and that led me to like, seek out, like, where were the places they've been? Who had they learned from, you know, commonalities as well as some outliers. Um, and so even as far back as like end of high school, early college, I was just seeking out anybody and everybody, um, who, you know, who, if they knew more than me or if they knew anything really about training, um, and I was just wearing them out, asking questions, asking to, you know, spend time with them. And it's just one of those things, man, like when you treat people right, when you, when you, you know, I think the other thing too, is you follow through. So if, if somebody gives you, gives you their time, um, you know, and, and they, whether it's answer questions or provide you some direction to always circle back and follow through and thank them for the direction that they gave you, or maybe they introduce you to the next person to follow through and show the impact, you know, kind of like what you're doing right now. Um, because then too, along the way, I think people are that much more motivated. Like they want to help you because they see the time that they're spending with you. You're appreciating it. And, you know, it's, it's helping you move forward. So anyways, you know, throughout college, I was able to take on a lot of different, you know, you know, start out small opportunities. One thing led to another and, somehow I was able to convince the, um, it wasn't my coach, it was a new coach, but it was my high school. Um, I was able to convince him to let me run their strength program. I was like oh, a yes. sophomore or junior in high school, like throughout, or in college um, throughout the summer. But I didn't have any like certifications, nothing. Like I didn't know what I was That's doing, dope. you know, but he, um, yeah. he trusted me. And so like, you know, I was able to kind of make a lot of mistakes there, learn from that. Um, and then, you know, that led to a bigger internship the following summer down at IMG Academies, which is like a huge, you know, yeah, all kinds yeah, of pros IMG. across all, yep. you know, basketball, football, tennis, golf, you know, all that. And so that was kind of my, my first break. And I was able to use that and leverage that to where my last year at University of Wisconsin, I was able to work with all the teams there. But that also came from, I mean, that was two and a half years of not taking no for an answer. I'd been, I'd been the, the basketball strength coach there. I'd gotten connected to him. I think like my sophomore year, now I'm a fifth year. Mm -hmm. And I just kept going back, kept going back, like asking, Hey, can I volunteer? Can I, you know, he kept saying no, kept saying no. And I just, <laughs> I wouldn't let it die. And so yeah, like, yeah. basically two and a half years later, he said, yes. Um, and then just taking advantage of that opportunity. Um, and then, so through that, 
I, uh, everyone I worked with there, they knew my boss with an and me- ultimate uh, mentor with the Bulls very well. And so, you know, again, it's, you know, I did right by them. I, I, I made an impact. I, you know, kind of stood out. And so they went to bat for me um, to to get an internship with the Bulls right out of college. So literally I graduated. As soon as I graduated, I started, you know, with the Bulls. And um, the crazy thing, like going back, like you talked about, you know, what's another way in type thing is um, we and and I tell this story a lot. But um, when I was in when I was in third grade, my third grade teacher had us do this like classroom assignment i think about it because like the camps you do it'd be cool to do something like this yeah because it made such an impact on me um but it was like write a letter to your future self 15 years from now and so i'm in like my first or second week as an intern with the bulls i'm living in lake geneva so i'm commuting like an hour and a half two hours you know each day to to get down there um and anyways i come home one day from my internship get this letter in the mail, open it up. And it's this little like chicken scratch, like terrible drawing. And it was that letter I wrote in third grade. It just said one line, it's like a proclamation. It was, um, I will be the starting point guard for the Chicago Bulls. And so it was like, that was my, you know, for me, that was my full circle moment. Cause it was like, I'm not, uh, I'm not playing point, but like- Right, you there though. (laughs) You know what I mean? Um, And so, that's you know, hard. for me, for me and on my journey that, you know, I think that even just in that moment that got me to dream even bigger because it was yep. like before that point, you know, obviously that's what I was aiming for was the Bulls. But then I was kind of, you know, it was really like larger of like, OK, but realistically, by the time I'm 35, I want to be in a position where I'll be a head NBA or high major college basketball, you know, strength coach. Um, And not only that, like I could get any job that opened up along either of those fronts, man, I'm 22. I I don't care. I'm an intern. That was, you know, that was my dream. So right, even right then and there, it, it cued me to start to think, you know, like what's, you know, what's, what's big, like what, you know, what more, um, but you know, that, that allowed me to kind of like cut my teeth in, in the NBA and, you know, and, and I've shared this with you before, but I think one of the things that's, that was really unique was like, man, like some of the players that, that like I coached, man, they, they had kids like dang near as old as me. You know what I mean? Like, like they've been in the NBA as long as I've been like Lindsey Hunter, by yeah. the time I coached him, he been in the NBA like 18, 19 years. I'm like, <laughs> when I coached him, I was like 24, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm like coaching him, but he right. was one of my biggest mentors, you know? And right, so right. having those experiences early on, um, I think is what what shaped me then to to come to Purdue. But I'm not gonna lie, and we've talked about this before too. When when I got that opportunity with with you, you know, with, with Purdue with paint and everything like that, on, on on first on first brush, man, like I'm I'm 27. I'm living downtown Chicago. We're on top of the world. Chicago Bulls basketball is back. We're the best team in the NBA. Derrick Rose is about to win MVP, like, and the city of Chicago shows you so much love um, okay. when you're winning. And so this is my dream. And also my mentor, one of my mentors in Boston is who he had recommended me for the Purdue job. And I'm like, man, I don't know about this. Like, you know, <laughs> Indiana, the cornfields, like I'm with That's the Bulls, yeah. we're about to win a championship. Like, oh, um, shit. And, uh, funny. and honestly, like, like, had he not recommended me, you know, I went to, I went to go on for the job and it was really, it was, mm. it was out of respect for him. And then even my, my, my current boss, you know, at the time with the bulls had, had told me as well. He was like, man, like you, you have to do this. This is the next step in your career of like, you know, um, building a program and, and, and going oh. and, and creating something. And, you know, when you're 27, like you're too young and immature to, to, to see yeah. it, like, yeah. Nah, man, like I'm in the NBA, I'm with the Bulls, you know, and um, but fortunately, you know, followed, you know, strength and counsel and wisdom and people that knew better than me. Um, and, uh, you know, that experience with you guys, man, that was ended up being seven years. But I mean, that's that's shaped, you know, so much of my path and, and my growth as, you know, a person, but also as a, as a professional. So 
Um, no, that was kind of long winded, but you. Oh no, that was perfect. No, nah, man, right no, nah, straight up. No, that was with. And I mean, you had said something real good at the end of what you were saying was, <clears throat> you getting to Purdue, you trusted your counsel, and that's what I like to say. Mm -hmm. I call my counsel my OGs, and so you yeah. seem like you had a counsel. Just kind of talk about how important that is, because here you you are, you had you were in a position, you didn't work, you weren't thinking about a job. Your counsel brought it to you. That someone else yeah. in your counsel said this is it, and mm -hmm. you did it. We'll, we'll, yeah. And it kind of it catapults you to the next part. Yeah. How big is that yeah. to have a council? How big is that <clears throat> to have a group of trusted individuals to go yeah. to? Yeah, man, it's it, it, it's everything. It's it's everything. And um, you know what's interesting too is I think you know, and and you probably found this to this point in, in your life and your career is is. Your counsel will change a bit over time, and and it should, and that's a natural part of it. It'll evolve a bit, but it but it also be like, what is the decision that you're making? Um, because based on what the decision that you're making is, there may be different people in your circle um, who are more uniquely qualified to um, you know help you know impart some. Uh, you know, things you should consider and, and how to right. think about it and all that. And I, you know, I think one thing that's, that's really important is I think, I think a lot of times people, and especially when you're young, you make the mistake of, and you say, you see this with young players all the time. I mean, shoot, you see it with, with young guys in the NBA as well, mm -hmm. where it's like you mistake counsel for surrounding yourself with a bunch of people that just tell you what you want to hear. Like that, that doesn't do anything for it. Like, if you tell me what I want to hear or what I already know, like, you're not necessarily helping me. Like there's, True. there's, there's a piece to that of, you know, um, kind of like, I believe in you, I support you. I, you know, but not just kind of going, going wherever it is where, where you hear what you want to hear. Um, and, and it, and it can be tough. And, um, you know, I obviously like paint talks about this all the time, but you know, it's like, you want people around you that are that are truth tellers, you know, and and, and they're going to tell you the truth, right, you know. And, right. and a lot of times, like you, you might not want to hear it. And it's and um, I think you listen to like a lot of Eric Thomas stuff as well. I know Eric yeah. Thomas talks about this a lot. It was like, man, you know, you you seek someone out for counsel. They tell you something you don't want to hear. Don't just run to the next person and be like, you know, until you find that person that. Um, tells you the thing that you want to hear, you know what yep. I mean? And so I think, yep. I think that's a big part of it, but ultimately it's, it's gathering different perspectives, you know, it's, it's, so it's going to be some people that maybe have had a big impact on you in, in terms of your life. So they know you as a person and, and what your, maybe like your wants and desires are and what make you happy at the core of like you as, as a person, then it's maybe some people who have have mentored you along the way or coached you along the way you know where where they're they're ahead of you in the game and so they've yep. made they've made mistakes that maybe you're going through or you could go through um and so they can give you some wisdom from that perspective and then i think it's some people who are maybe going through it together with you who are like on your same journey maybe in a different you know so as an athlete maybe you play basketball but it's somebody that they're a really good baseball player or whatever, you know, and, and, but they're at that same point with you. Um, and so I think that's the thing too, with counsel is having it, you know, really kind of well-rounded so that you're hearing all these different perspectives. Um, but then at the end of the day, the thing that is really, really important. And I think people lose sight of this at times as well, is you have to make your own decision. You know, nobody in that council is important. Like their strength in counsel, um, but nobody that is part of your council makes that decision for you. They inform your decision. And I think like what's interesting and in, in every major decision I've made in my life um, from, you know, and there were further back, but we won't get into that, but like <laughs> going from the Bulls to Purdue and then yeah. going from ultimately Purdue to, to now future, um, it was having these range of perspectives bouncing stuff off people, being a sounding board, asking questions, and then they're coming back, challenging me to make sure I'm considering all the things that I should consider. So, but then what's interesting is you play some of that counsel off of each other a little bit. Cause like exactly. I go to one person, they give me, they give me something to think about that maybe goes against some, what somebody else told me. So then I come back and I'm like, Hey, 
I talked to I talked to so and so, and you know they the push they had was was X Y and Z, which kind of went against what you said. Like, what do you think about that? You know, and and you and you sort of edit edit and tinker down um, to make the best decision. But and and it's it's like um, and there's a really good book on this. You would like this actually. It's called Thinking in Bets. Is by Annie Duke. Annie Duke has won like multiple World Series of Poker championships, oh. but she's also a she's also like a PhD um, in like behavioral science, like decision making, that sort of thing. Um, and one of the things she talks about in that book is everything you do, every every decision you make in life, the choices you make. A lot of times, people talk about, oh, this is you know, it's chess, not checkers. It's not. It's poker, because yeah. even That's even true. in chess even though there's like, you know, there's whatever trillions of moves, ultimately there's a finite number of moves that can occur on that board. With poker, it's infinite. And, and that's life. And that's any decision that you make is you're always making a bet. You know, you're always managing risk, you're managing upside um, where you are in your life, but it's always a bet. Um, you want to be as informed as possible you know, going into that decision, making the most informed decision you can, but ultimately it's still a bet. Even if it has 90%, 90, 90% probability that this works right. out well, inherently that means 10% it fails. Yeah, exactly. You know, so like if it fails, it's not like, oh, this one, no, 10% it, it fails yeah. versus the other, you know, so understand those things and, and you figure that out over time of your own experiences of as long as you go back, and you go back and you go, when I was in a similar spot, I made X, Y, and Z decision. It didn't work out well and dissect it. What are the reasons why it didn't work out well? And now that informs future decisions. And that's also where counsel comes in is because they've maybe seen some situations that you haven't seen yet. So they can inform um, ultimately the bet that you make. Oh, no, that's not, I mean, no, that's super useful. And that's super good um, advice and knowledge for any young people listening, because having, I mean, that just summed it all up. I think that part is very important to just going through your career, going through life in general. Mm -hmm. Then, because, because Josh, I mean, you had a big transition. You go from, like you just said, Derrick Rose on the verge of winning MVP. Yeah. And then you, yeah. um, next you know, you were Robbie Hummel after ACL yeah. injury. So, yeah. Yeah. and not even just Rob, I mean, you had freshmen coming out of high school. You had Anthony Johnson. Yeah. Yep, so yep, okay. what goes in, what's the difference, I would say, going into training a pro guy in the NBA is getting paid to be there, then now you're training guys, maybe a senior upper class like Rob or just mm. an 18, 19 year old guy that coming out of college. And you yeah, have to, because in the summertime, was... we spend the most, <clears throat> my bad cut you off, but in the summertime, we spend the most time with you in the, in the weight room. So, I mean, the right. coaches only have a limited time. So you get well, these guys. And, and especially right off back of high then, they didn't have any time. Oh, yeah, exactly. When I was coming, when I was in high school, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, yeah. So, yeah. so when the guy's coming off of high school, he's coming off of campus. Maybe he lifted in high school. Maybe he didn't. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe his body. Maybe he wants to lift. Maybe he never has. Yeah. What's that like going into preparing for a college basketball season? Yeah. Um. Man, it was. You know, it it, it was interesting coming in, and again, you know, I feel super fortunate that that I started in the NBA and then went from the NBA to college. Um, because, you know, I think ultimately that shaped my approach a as a coach, because in the NBA, something you learn very, very quickly is it doesn't matter what, what you know, and, and, you know, or any of that, if you don't have a foundation of strong relationships and ultimately trust with each and every one of your players, like, it's just not going to work because, you know, and also at that level, I mean, you know, more or less, like if they want to, they'll, they'll tell you kind of like, you know, where to go more or less, because like, right. you know, so it's like, so like, you know, in college and back in that, in that time, it was, it, there was much more of, and I think it's shifting away from this as, as you get into more like coaching science and, you know, and you kind of study, you know, what is most effective, but like, especially at that time, there was a there was a stigma and stereotype in college of like, you know, be a dictator. Like you, hey, like you're gonna do what I tell you to do because I said so. And like, don't ask questions, you know, and that's it. And to an extent, um, on the surface at the college level, like, right. yeah, like you you sort of have, like there's consequences. Exactly. 
in in the NBA level, what's the consequence? I'm gonna find a guy. So this dude is making 15 million a year, and I'm gonna find him like, I, th- I think the fine's like a couple thousand. That'd be like Ray if 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 I came to you and I'm like, and you like you didn't you didn't want to condition that day. And I'm like, all right, Ray, but you know if if you don't condition today, you gotta give me five dollars. You'd be like, <laughs> bet like here, like. But but you also like even though it's five dollars and that ain't that much, I'm messing with your money. So right. that's the principle. You're like, man, you know, exactly. now now that's gonna drive a wedge. So what was interesting was like when I was with the Bulls, even though it was common practice across the league that like you would find guys, you know, if they didn't if they didn't get their minimum number of workouts for the month, you know, it was like you had the minimum two work in season, two workouts a week, like eight workouts a month. If you didn't get that, you got fined. We didn't find anybody. And it was because if they're not doing two workouts a week, if they're not doing eight workouts a month, that ain't on them. That's on us. We got to be better. Um, and so I and so I learned a lot about that through, um, you know, being being in the, in the NBA through being on the road with, you know, my vets like Lindsey Hunter, like uh, PJ Brown, Kurt Thomas, you know, mm-hmm. older, older players like that yeah. who, you know, every road trip I would go to dinner with, it was an automatic, like wherever they were going to dinner, it was like, Josh, like seven o'clock, we're going to dinner here. And you just sit there for four hours and they tell stories and teach you lessons of like, you know, how to connect with guys. And, and like, you know, there were, there were young players. I was struggling to, to get them to do the things that, that we needed. It wasn't that like we needed them to do, but it was like things that were going to help them, or at least we believe, you know, it it was going to help them. And that's the other thing, have the awareness. We might be wrong you know? Mm. Um, Mm. And so, and then I think that's where I learned is, you know, it's not a dictatorship is the best that that's going to do is create obedience. It's going to create a group of followers, but, but, but over a longer term, it's also going to create resent. So maybe people are doing what you, what you're telling them to do, but they, but they resent you for it. They're going through the motions. They don't believe in it. Um, And it's, and it's limiting the potential of what you can get out of those people. And so I learned very early on, it's, it's a partnership. It's a, it's a two way yeah. street. It's not just me telling you and me imparting knowledge on That's you. Right. It's me asking you questions. It's me learning from you. It's us working together. It's me challenging you, but you challenging me back, you know, and I got to be open to that. Cause my title don't matter. My title don't matter. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, you. Straight like, up. like you don't listen Straight to up. me just because you know, oh, I'm, I'm your coach. Like, no, yeah. I got to earn that. You right. know what I mean? Facts. Um, and so, you know, I had that foundation coming into Purdue. Um, yeah. but at the same time, you know, I think I was, I had a little naivety about me of like, I mean, we're on top of the world. Like Derek just won MVP. We end up losing to, to Miami in, in the conference finals. Um, you know, and, and like, we're rolling literally like two days after the, conference after we lost in the conference finals was my first day coaching guy so so like 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 our season ended like exit interviews and that was saturday yeah monday i was in west lafayette coaching my first session and again so i'm 27 um and uh you know i think i think not an arrogance but a naivety of like man i just coached the youngest mvp in the nba like these dudes, they're going to do whatever I, you know, because yep. I came from the Bulls. I like, they don't care. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they don't know me. Like, I think I tweeted at you not that long ago. Like, cause, um, cause Robbie, he was still going through his rehab. He did it. He was doing it in Chicago. Cause I hadn't been there for any of his, yeah. his injuries. So like that was yeah. already set up. So it was like the, the first month I was at, um, I was on campus and I was training the boys and all that, you know, Robbie wasn't there. Right. And so he comes back is during is during camps. And um, so he's walking through Mackey and, and I'm walking through. And so I so I see him. But we've never we've never he knew who I was because some of the guys I coached with, like one of the guys I coached with with the Bulls was his AAU coach. Mm-hmm. So he knew who I was. But like we never met. We never spoke to each other. We never. Right, seen right, each other. right, right, right. So I see him, you know, this is our all American Purdue golden boy. <laughs> like, you know, is gonna be you know the the key guy to to our success, and um, and so I I walk up I'm like, hey Rob, Josh Bonatall, like good to meet you. He just looks at me like so confused, and you know Rob's just the nicest guy ever. So like, 
Doesn't matter, you know, he's gonna spend time with whoever, say hello. And he was like looking at me and I, you know, I have my Purdue gear, obviously, you know. And he was like, Oh, are you you one of the new student managers? And I'm like, <laughs> this off to a this off to a great start, you know. Um Oh man. And, you know, I think, I think, um, but I think that was good to like, you know, put that, yeah. put that in perspective. Like, man, it doesn't matter. Like, Thanks. you know, that was with the Bulls. It just matters, you know, what do I do with each one of these guys and, and take the time to, to, to get to know each one of these guys, um, take the time to listen, take the time to understand what their wants, goals, dreams, desires are. And then how can I help you, you know, go and do that? And And I think the other part of that is, a lot of times in coaching, and and I think you do this to an extent, but like a mistake a lot of us make, and, and I know I've made a lot, is, is I impart what I think should be important to you and what I mm. think, you know, and, and sometimes it's just not. Sometimes mm. you have different things that, um, you know, kind of motivate you and things like that. Um, and I think it's a mistake to change how somebody, you know, a lot of times if, 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 you know, there's different things that motivate them, but right. I think you can find how does, how do we align our incentives here? So to speak of like, you know, for us as a team, we're trying to win championships and whatever. Um, if you have different desires, how do we align incentives so that your motivation lines up with all the things you want, need, desire, you get when we win together as a group. And so kind of learning, learning some of those things. Um, but it was, you know, coming in, it was, we broke it down to the basics, man. Like we, you know, and these were dudes who like, they'd been, you know, they'd, they'd been lifting three, four, five years in, in a college program. Our first six weeks, man, like it was like your freshman year when you came in that summer, our first six weeks, all these dudes, big, strong dudes, Sandy, you know, DJ Burr's strong dude, like, we didn't touch a bar, we didn't touch a platform, we didn't, you know, everything was body weight, everything was isometrics, dumbbells, cables, and breaking, which, you know, it's a lot of what you would do with the player on the court is like, right. okay, we're going to dial it back, we're going to make sure that foundation is really strong. And then, you know, we're going to, we're going to kind of build from there. But um, I think, I think the reason why that went so well was like, we met guys where they were at, we we genuinely took an interest and because it was myself and Nicodemus Christopher yep, who yep. you got to know but you didn't get to but you, obviously you got Gary his yep, brother, his brother. Both, you know obviously both those guys are two of the best in, in college yep. basketball now at yep. Missouri and, and Pitt so but it was it was me and Nicodemus man and it was like you know I mean we we're spending every hour we had just just with with the guy like like guys would play pickup in the evenings and we was we would stay there at Holloway until nine PM just hanging out, like eating food with, you know, and 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 just building those relationships. So Right, right. And now and now I mean Josh, I know like I said before, what you did at Purdue for your time starting there with Robbie, I mean, him mm -hmm. being him losing to Kansas that year, the next year I come in, I mean we go through some rough seasons, we we take off. I mean, you guys won the Big Ten when I leave. Yeah. Like I said, you were, I mean, even this work you did with Biggie, um, all <laughs> the work you, I mean, with AJ, Isaac, you AJ, think about the guys man, that's yeah. come in and the bodies just changed, development that's happened. Mm -hmm. uh, with PJ, I mean, uh, uh, PJ's mm -hmm. mile time from his freshman year is still going. So, I mean, for- Bro, and PJ was the fact, remember, remember the knock on PJ was like, like this dude ain't fast enough, right? Yep, yep, yep. PJ, until No Gel came along, PJ held the record of fastest 20 meter sprints. And that's yep. electronic time. That ain't me with the- That ain't no stopwatch. Yep, um, yep, yep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, seeing for, that, yeah, that for you to The guys developed, and that's what, I saw people talking about that. Um, they were comparing Purdue, they were comparing Purdue and um, IU. And they talk okay. about the development. And they are talking yeah. about guys developing on the court. But I think that's one thing that Purdue has. I think, I mean, I'm gonna say you, cause that's where I started for you is that- Yeah. Purdue separates itself in that space too. Because yeah. yeah, we getting better on the court, 
Yeah, but exactly. we're doing everything that we need to do mm-hmm. in the weight room mm-hmm. because your what mm-hmm. you put in your program, mm-hmm. it matched exactly yeah. what we needed to do on the court. We running yeah. curl screens. Yeah, yep. we working on how to get low and lower our shoulder to do that. Yep. You know what I mean? So yeah, yep. it wasn't yep. just out there. We were just in tank top lifting weights. You know what I mean? We, yeah, exactly. It was a lot of flash. It was a lot of real, actual, yeah. intentional yep. work. Yeah, and I don't think, yep. like I said, like I said to start, I don't think that gets enough credit to where it is. I know it's behind the scene work, yeah, I but that. I always appreciate it. And just yeah. for you to come in and work under paint, I know uh, listeners always, they always want to know what's it like. Cause I was a player under paint. I've never worked mm. under paint or, cause for me, to me in my head, I would tell the freshman, I would tell the freshman, yeah, getting to know Coach Owens is cool. Getting tight with Coach G is cool. But man, yeah. if Josh not, Saying you're doing all right in the weight room, pain ain't pain not playing you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what's that like having that relationship with Pain yeah, where yeah, yeah, he's yeah. checking in with you on the guys? I mean, yes. you essentially his right hand man because you're handling something that he's not a part right, of. Right, right, right. Um, man, paint. You know he and I and 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 I probably don't. I don't. I don't tell him this enough. Like you know, every once in a while, like uh. uh Back in the fall, we raised, and I think I sent you this text as well, but like we, we had just raised our, our Series B at Future, which was $24 million. So it's starting from a basement to now we're starting to grow. That's and cool. I just, you know, I sent him that and I sent a message just like thanking him for everything he's done to influence me and, and help me grow as, 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 you know, a coach, as a leader, as, as a person. Um, and I think like any great mentor, you know, there's, there's things where like in the moment you're like, oh man, like he don't see what I see, you know, and like you get, and you're young too. You got wisdom on me, you know, where you're like, oh man. And then, and then it, and then it takes like, oh, that's why, you know, it's like some probably the stuff you go through as a player, as a player, you're like, you know, you know, and then, and then, so you, so I think that, I think one of Payne's gifts is some of the things that you learn from him you actually even are learning after, like when you're no longer, you're like, you're like, man, now that like clicks, that makes sense. You know, what, what he taught me there, what he did there. Um, but one of the greatest things about paint, you know, too, is, is, you know, that I learned from him, but also that I was empowered by him was, I mean, he said this to me probably from, from my first day, he was like, he was like, Josh, whatever you think that they need to do like in the weight room or training or physical development, like that's what we're going to do because I'm not an expert there. You're the expert. Like you came from the Chicago bull. You did all this different stuff. We hired you for a reason. So whatever you need to do, however you need to do it, like that's what we're going to do. Um, and, and he backed me and he supported me. So a lot of it was like, he just, he, he kind of stood back and he let me do my thing. Um, and he let me like earn it over time where I think over time, cause, cause early you got to prove yourself. And honestly, right, even thanks. really like, you know, it take especially with something like physical development that takes three years to like show the proof of the pudding. It, you know, it takes someone like you coming in as a freshman. And I think about like two of my proudest moments personally is seeing the development of you seeing the development of Duke. and I could go on and on and on and on, but I still remember before you were coming in and they were saying the same thing about Dakota before you were coming in. Okay. Yeah. Like Ray could score in the big 10, but who's he going to guard? He can't guard anybody in the big 10. He can't, you know, he can't move his feet. He can't do it. He can't blah, blah, blah. They talk about what you can't do. And I remember you came in and you were willing to work from day one. We worked together. We learned from each other. We pushed each other. I mean, there are times you want to kill me. I want to kill you. You know what I mean? We went through all of it. Um, But we didn't do, as you alluded to before, we didn't do a bunch of stuff that traditionally people would be like, oh, this is what you need to do to improve Ray Fell's defense. And remember, we would talk about that. It was like, right, a lot of the stuff that we're going to do it's not going to look like what you think you might need to do. And also it's not a quick fix. It's not going to happen, you know, overnight. And so you think about like your development, then it was your junior year where like, you know, but we were making progress, but it was your junior year 
now Rafael Davis, the best defender in the in the Big Ten, maybe the best defender in the nation. Right, right. But when you're a freshman, they say you couldn't guard anybody. <laughs> Fact. Same thing happened with Dakota. Yeah. But where I give paint credit is even a lot of the stuff that we're doing, I'm sure he was looking at me like, man, that's not, you know, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, that's not what they need to be doing. We need Ray to be a better defender. You're not, you're not out there working on defensive, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But he just he sat, you know, he'd give me some input. He'd ask questions. He'd challenge me. And like, you need to do that. But at the end of the day, he deferred to me there. And one thing yeah. I remember he said early on, he was like, he was like, Josh, if, uh, if, if like, if guys can't make shots and they can't make free throws, that's on me. Or if they can't make a pat, you know, whatever, that's on me. If, you know, if they're not in shape, if they're not, you know, strong, like whatever, that's on you. And mm. like, you're an expert, <laughs> so right. do your thing. Um, right. And so I think, but I think like, you know, having success stories, which takes time of like, you know, in the early, you know, like you, um, AJ and people like that. Now it's like year three, year four. And you know, like some people on our program, cause they look at me like, man, Josh is like, man, this dude, he's off on a tangent again. Like he's crazy. And I'm sure Peyton looked at me like that plenty of times when he was like, man, whatever whatever you're doing is working so you know keep doing your thing and I think as a young coach you know it was I'd been an assistant before that I'd never run my own program for him to give me that level of trust from day one to make mistakes like you know this I made plenty of mistakes you know but it's without those mistakes I could have never grown I could have never got better and that's the same thing I tried to do with you guys was like, I got to give you guys the room to make mistakes. Because if I jump in every single time, then you just have a safety net. You're just going to look over your shoulder, wait for me to jump in. Like, no, solve it, figure it out, sure. you know? And that's kind of, you know, I think that's, that's one big thing that paint did with me. And what that allowed was, and I think you've seen this uh, maybe from the outside, but like within the, within the industry as, as a whole, like training basketball players, a lot of the stuff that we were doing in those first, you know, two, three, four years, at the time, people in the sports performance world, even, and training basketball players, like, what are you doing? Like, this right, is, right. and now, fast forward, everybody wants to, man, you got to be sprinting your whole off season. You got to be, you know, and That's it was real. all these things where it was like, you know, let's, let's test this, let's try this. But the only reason we could test and try it is because, paint supported me paint back to me um you know to to be able to do it to be able to make those mistakes you know and 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 learn from it so oh, that's super real and uh, i appreciate it. and uh um that's like i said i don't think purdue gets to where they are right now without that groundwork that was laid like you said mm -hmm. the, i mean the the for you to be able to see the future early i mean obviously mm -hmm. you're doing work with future and I definitely want to be able to talk about that. Maybe, maybe not have time today, but definitely want to be able to talk about what you're doing there. That's a whole different yeah. entity in itself. <laughs> and then, but just yeah. everything that you've done just for Purdue basketball, like I said, I mean, you got you handle arguments, you handle disputes, you are mm -hmm. therapist sometimes, strength <laughs> coach. I mean, you got, yeah. I mean, you went and got guys. So it was a thing where guys like you don't necessarily get the credit for the fans, but mm -hmm. You talk about my development. I mean, people talk about, I just saw some clips of me playing defense yesterday. I'm like, yo, like, I used to sit down. But I wasn't sitting like, as a, as a <laughs> freshman, I couldn't have been. I got that one. I got that one. One of my presentations is is you on Karis. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I saw. I was like, I was like, 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 so. Yeah. <laughs> so it's one of those things where. points that game. <laughs> and stuff, stuff like that is not, it's not, I don't think it's happening without that type of program, without that type of, like, attention to detail that you had. Mm -hmm. But so. Josh, no, I appreciate you and everything you did for Purdue. The guys right now, you think about it, Gavin was oh, your yeah. student assistant yeah. Yeah. coming under yeah, you yeah. after you finished well, at Purdue. Well, yeah, and then, yeah, then, two, I guess two years as the assistant. Yep, yeah. yep, and then now he's back. So your fruit, your labor, I mean, the work you put down yeah. is still being is still being laid out mm -hmm. at Purdue, and I think that's mm -hmm. tight, and I think it would always be, it'd always be there, because I, I can relate to them, because I know yeah. 
not not I don't know necessarily what Gavin's doing now, but I kind of know where Gavin got his mm-hmm. transition into the game from. You know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. Yeah, I yeah, can yeah. give Eric Hunter some advice on how to deal with yeah. Gavin. So I yeah, think, exactly. Um, exactly. I think that's super, I think that's super dope. And for me, speaking on the whole on behalf of Purdue and the fans, we appreciate you, man. And um yeah, definitely look no, forward to finishing this it. season. Yeah, it's um Man, it's you know, and it's it's what you did. It's and and a lot of people don't do this, but I think it's what um, has made Purdue special. Is this idea and and the New Zealand All Blacks rugby team, like the winningest, most dominant team in any sport anywhere in the world over the last hundred plus years. They've kind of popularized this idea, but I think what what Purdue has become is a collection of people where is bigger than any one of us individual, sure. you know, and obviously paint has, has built that foundation. Um, but it's, it's leave the Jersey in a better place. Facts. And so that's, that's what, you know, when, when you came in and you came through, it was, you know, even in, in your, in your last year, when you were on the way out, it wasn't just what happens this year, but what happens next year when I'm gone. And I think for me, the, um, like the the biggest moment where where I saw that where it was just like you know you, you felt so good with where Purdue is going is my last year we had just lost three games in a row we we won 19 in a row and then we lost three in a row and you know now it's like oh we're falling apart whatever I remember for for two hours in my office after practice that day it was it was me Joey Brooks and our four seniors Dakota PJ Isaac and Vince and we're talking about like kind of what you know what needs to happen to make sure we're in a good spot you know to to finish out the season and talk through you know a bunch of stuff but the thing that kept coming up and this what blew me away was they kept being like yeah but what happens next year if we don't correct this now when we're not here what happened like when we're not here what about Carson next year? What about making sure Carson takes the next step? What about making sure, like, who's going to leave? What about making sure Ryan Klein and Grady are prepared? And this is their senior year, man. We're, we're two games away from the Big Ten tournament. And NCAA, you know, obviously everybody knows we saw I mean, probably should have won it that year. I'm, yeah. You know, still, you know, but um, you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. this is for seniors. They've worked everything for this. And they're thinking about, man, and that, like, I got chills. I'm like, man, they're, they're not even thinking about right now. They're thinking about, man, when we're gone, how do we make sure it's, it's in an even better place? And, um, you know, as you talked about, as you talked about Gavin, I think it's the same thing. And that's why I was kind of so thrilled to see him take over for me. And I even said this to, to Paint and Chad and kind of our crew was like, the awesome thing about Gavin coming in now is, We've set it in a way where Gavin is going to go and take this thing and make it better than, than I ever could. Because along the way, just like you guys set the example, like Pete sets the example, it was never about me. It was never about you guys. It was never about, and, and because of that, because you don't make it about yourself, you know, that's what leads to now Gavin's making it better. Now Eric Hunter's making it better. You know what I mean? So yeah, straight up, um, straight up. the future is bright, man. <laughs> No, man, Josh, no, straight up. And like I said, man, definitely I want to get you back on because I want to talk everything about future. I want to have an entire episode about everything you got going. Yeah, I just want to make sure the fans definitely understood who was the man behind everything going on. So when we do get you back on, they understand <laughs> that they need to definitely listen because if you can get me to play defense, if you could get me <laughs> to, you know what I mean? If you get AJ to lose some weight, <laughs> what you say is what you say is gold. Yeah. So the nah, um everybody out there tune in boiler up rayfield davis um rayfield davis podcast on youtube josh tell them where they can find you and everything you got going on in the meantime uh so you find me on especially twitter at jay bonnetall i've been trying to do a lot of threads on like coaching leadership you know stuff like that and then um check out what we got going on at future future.co a bunch of we got we got former head nba strength coaches head college basketball you know, big time, big time coaches, um, it, you know, it's 150 a month. We pair them with you and like literally you got coaches that have, have trained pros, have trained MVPs working with you every single day. So 
um, check it out. Future.co. Co. Future.co. 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 Uh, we definitely going to get you back on here to talk more about that. But like I said before, if you're looking for something to work out, uh, fitness, um, <laughs> this is a guy that definitely can do it. A guy that changed my body, changed a lot of guys' bodies. Uh, it just simply just knows what he's doing and looks at the game in a different way and, and just cares about it. Because, I mean, tireless worker, I can go on and on. <laughs> but no, nah, Josh, uh, definitely support anything you got going on. Like, like you said, go to future.co, check it out. Um, until next time, boiler up. We